Hello, everyone. I'm Ahmed Asakir. Uh, I'm not a physician. I studied pharmacy and biotechnology. Then I had my master degree in genetics and genetic engineering. Uh, later on, I started working in IVF, infertility treatment. Uh, but after a couple of years, I decided to change my career again. And now I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I have some companies, like most of them are related to health technology. Um, so that was just a quick intro about who I am. And now we will be talking about or starting our, yeah. So to, <clears throat> today we are talking about social platforms or social media platforms. I, I'm sure that everyone here is familiar with these logos. Okay, and we just talked about a couple of them. We will talk about the third one. Gladly, we will not talk about that one. Although some people are now using it even in the medical field because it's one of the fastest growing uh, social media platforms. But I'm glad enough that I'll be talking about a professional one, which is LinkedIn. Not everyone is familiar with LinkedIn. Not, we don't all know how to use LinkedIn, right? So I didn't know how to start that presentation, actually. And I decided to start it from my perspective as an entrepreneur. We are starting something which is called a startup. And then we are pitching our idea to investors to come to invest in our companies so we can offer our product to uh, public. And that's why I decided to get screenshots from the pitch deck of LinkedIn when they were pitching their idea to investors. At that time, which was in 2003 or 2004, they started to talk about internet 1.0 and internet 2.0. Internet one is uh, like a static platform, something that you are just searching and you are getting information from it directly, but you are not interacting with it. Then came the second revolution of internet 2.0, which gives you networks and you can interact with population. So they said that we are building a professional people search, which is gonna be later LinkedIn. To deliver the idea easier to you, they said that we had banking or banks one, 0.0 and then we have banks 2.0. Banks is like whatever bank you know. Citibank is worldwide one. Most of you should know it. Or here we, in Egypt we have CIB or whatever bank you are dealing with. That's a normal bank. But then with the internet revolution we had PayPal. I think you can be familiar also with PayPal, which is like one of the biggest payment platforms in the world right now. They talked about search engines, a static search, search engine, which is built on internet 1.0. And they talked about the smart search engines, which is Google. At that time, Google was not that big, but now everyone is affected by Google on a daily basis. And that's how they introduced themselves. They said, we are the professional people search engine 2.0. So LinkedIn is just for professional people or professional work, you are branding yourself for professional purposes. It's not just that I am sharing my daily life or my daily activities. I am not just tweeting something short or something funny, or I'm just retweeting. You can do all these activities actually on LinkedIn as well. But here you have to put in mind who are your target audience. <clears throat> on Facebook, it can be anyone. It can be your relatives. It can be your mom, your dad, like whoever. On Twitter, I'm sure you, you will not know most of the people you, who are following you. You just have a fan base or who, whoever you call it. So after putting that in your mind and you know who are your target audience, to get started on LinkedIn, you have to start by building a strong network. Strong network means peers. You are adding or following your colleagues and they are adding you back. You are posting, and we will talk about that later, your achievements or your 
continuous education or whatever certificate you added to your career. So that's how you start building network and these people are endorsing you. It, endorsing you means that they approve what you have just said. Yeah, we met Dr. that person, Dr. X on that conference and yeah, he show us that amazing workshop or whatever. So your achievements are being kind of accredited by others. And that's how you build a network. So what about building a brand for yourself? What's your career? What have you learned so far? What endorsements have you got till now? What publications have you published till now? Okay, I have two publications and they are also on my LinkedIn profile as well when I was still working in genetics. And you can see my colleagues or whoever participated with that publication talking about what you have done throughout that research. So you are building a solid career that people can go back and know what has your career been like. Most of people on LinkedIn actually establishing a name as speaker or advisor. Like after some time, you are being known for someone who is contributing at a specific field. And then you are being an advisor. Like if I am searching for that field, who I will get advice from? You can get advices from others. And I, yeah, I, I mentioned it here. You will search for that field just by searching for the name of the field and directly people who mentioned that career or that field to their profiles, they will appear to you in, in the field. So you are getting connected with them, you are getting advices from them, and as well, they, they are getting advices from you. So that, that's how it works. It's just for professional work, not just that I am posting um, something to get some patients. No, patients, if you are a doctor and you are trying to brand yourself on that way, no, patients are not on LinkedIn but businesses are on LinkedIn. And that will take us to the next point, which is stakeholders. Stakeholders are not stockholders. Okay. okay, stakeholders are the people who are like fulfilling your career's portfolio or who are interacting with the same uh, business that you are interacting with. Patients, can be stakeholders, okay. But also companies that will help you or support your business are stakeholders. Even media marketing um, agencies are stakeholders, events are stakeholders, like pharmaceutical companies are stakeholders, nurses are stakeholders. Like I'm just trying to explain the term of stakeholder if someone is not familiar with it. So on LinkedIn, we call it it's B2B platform business to business platform. It's not B2C, it's not business to customer. You are a business. When you are on LinkedIn, you are starting your own business there. You are building a, an idea or a brand for your business there. So you can be found with, by all the other stakeholders, but believe me, except patients, you will not find it there. So for example, that's a post uh, from my LinkedIn when we met uh, Mr. President, in, in one of the conferences, uh, he was interested by our startup. I shared the same post on Facebook. For sure, it got much more likes, much more shares. My mom loved it, my aunt as well. <laughs> but that's not <laughs> that's not why you are posting something for like you you didn't get anything. You, okay, you just got some appreciation. But when I shared it on Facebook, here you can find me and my co-founder. Uh, or the co-founder of the company, also Dr. Ismail, we got reshares uh, or we got known by lots of other stakeholders that can support us. Here is Health 2.0, for example, which was, uh, which is uh, like one of the platforms that support healthcare startups. And they have like much wider uh, exposure to investors, to angel investors to incubators, accelerators, and so on. So here you get approached by stakeholders and that's what you get from LinkedIn. So let's, let's talk about you as a doctor. 
after knowing how LinkedIn would work, how do you think you can build your brand on Facebook? Like, I can wait for you to answer that question if you, if you can, if anyone has an idea, or I can start giving you some ideas. So anyone can think about something that he can use LinkedIn for now? Yeah, okay, you can. My name is Siba Ragi. I'm an uh, Egyptian uh, fellowship uh, at gastroenterology and hematology. I used uh, LinkedIn as a source of education, uh, as continuous medical education. I am interested in um, uh, management um, and uh, communication skills. Uh, improve myself and in this area. Um, as a doctor, I um, um, uh, I registered um, uh, my education uh, my education uh, certificates uh, every uh, um, CMA, if you continuous medical education courses, I take it at uh, LinkedIn and I CV. CV. Uh, so, okay, th that was an example of how to use LinkedIn. And it's a platform that you do not need to keep updating all the time. Like I don't need to be as active as I should be on uh, Twitter or Facebook to be to be known or to for Facebook algorithm or Twitter algorithm to keep suggesting me to people. Here you can just be active whenever you have a new achievement. And believe me, LinkedIn will not leave your followers like he will keep overwhelming them with emails that you finally posted something, go and check it. Please go congratulate your friend. So don't, don't worry, you will be found easily. There, there's someone who is raising hand here, but I'm not sure what or later or now, okay. So how, how can I give her the chance to, yeah. Yeah, I think it's okay. So allow to talk. So hello, Aya, you, you, you just raised your hand. So now you have the chance to talk. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a great pleasure really to be uh, attending such a great uh, presentation. Uh, just starting from, from the beginning, uh, all of them were, were wonderful and very useful for me as a medical student. I'm um, in the fifth grade. And especially, um, I'm talking about Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, in the last months, I, I have been taking a research um, workshop. Uh, I was very interested in uh, medical research. And um, I'm just trying to learn how to use these platforms just to, to get a chance uh, to be in a team, like a research team. And um, my mentor uh, had um, advised us just to revise LinkedIn and Twitter, like regularly um, following the people or doctors who are interested in research and who are searching for a research team or uh, someone to, to uh, collaborate with to produce a research, things like this. And I think uh, that's one of the most uh, important um, ways we can use these platforms uh, in like a medical student, uh, not only a doctor's. Yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's how to use LinkedIn. And I can tell you that while I'm living abroad, like whenever I try to apply for something, they are just asking for your LinkedIn profile. So you, you have to keep it updated. It's not something that you have to open on a daily basis. Okay, if you are that much active, you can open it on a daily basis. But it's something that you need to update it as long as you are updating your career. So that, that, that was a quick intro about LinkedIn, you can search more about it, but I can tell you that you can use it, especially to reach advisors. If you want to do a master's degree or PhD degree or whatever, 
you can reach advisors or professors in your career through LinkedIn. You can follow your, their universities. You can find the chances they are offering. You can always find even open positions through LinkedIn. So like one, yeah, okay. If you have a question, you can. Can I use it as um, a CV instead of uh, 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 actual uh, CV? In any registration, in any registered uh, scholarship or... So it, it's that easy now. You, you don't even need to rebuild your CV by yourself. Just by one click, they are extracting all the data that you have been sharing for years and they are building a CV for you. Also, so sometimes if you are trying to recruit someone, you can just type uh, the position that you are searching for. And instead of writing the requirements that you are searching for, LinkedIn is suggesting it automatically for you. Okay, if you need someone, in, for that position, he should need, he should have these criteria and it's working automatically like that. So uh, the last thing I will add to you is, it's a good way to interact with universities if you want to proceed with your studies. I, I have used it for, for, for that reason and it, it works very fine for me. Also, like these two are actually my companies like Curatrip or Vitals. Curatrip, for example, is a medical tourism platform. You will not find advertisements for it targeting you in Egypt or as a doctor because no, we are targeting international patients. But if you have that kind of idea, you will just write medical tourism and you will find medical tourism agents that will appear to you so you can start interacting or con contacting them. Vitals as well is a smart platform that we just, created to connect all ICU units in the country. So if you have a patient and that you cannot find an empty ICU bed for them, just by contacting Vitals, they will find a bed for you in 10 minutes. Also, they are providing uh, home visits. So if you are a new doctor or if you are a doctor who are who is doing home visits, you can just contact them. So you can, it's, it's just something for you to open your mind for new ideas that my career is not just being a doctor, putting publications and so on. No, interact with stakeholders, inter interact with other businesses that can help you with your career. Now we are in, actually it's not just 2.0, internet 2.0 now. We, you can hear about web three revolution. So you have to use that technology, open your mind for it and like it will offer you a huge service. So thank you for that. And if you have any question, you can just ask it.